Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through the ABRSM Theory Grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download those in US Letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll also find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and hints on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time on exam day when you're working through your exam paper. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be super, and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. And now we're going to look at the last part of paper C of the 2015 grade three past papers. So if you turn with me to page 12, we'll have a look at this last question. And so I hope that you've had a go of this before. Um, and so it's always better to learn by your mistakes. And so now we'll check through these answers together. So we're referring back to this little extract here. Now, um, these musical terms and performance directions are now going to be presented to you in the modern, um, newly revised 2018 exam. Uh, these will be presented to you as a multiple choice format. However, this is still a really good revision exercise. So although the exam paper won't look like this from 2018 onwards, it's a good way of just testing your knowledge. And don't forget that these terms could be anything from grade one, two and three accumulative. So it's um, worthy of a bit of revision there. So we'll go ahead and just give these the definitions. So moderato means moderately or at a moderate speed or a moderate tempo. Anything along those lines will do. Con anima, well con is your linking word that means with. And it's not too far a stretch of the imagination to see that anima means with animation, animation there. I guess you could, animation, yes. Uh, I guess you could also sort of infer it means animated or spirited, anything along those lines. Now here we have the metronome marking and we've got um, two points that we must address here. The number, we have 126 and then we have this here which means crotchet beats or you could say uh, quarter note beats um, per minute that's the other important factor that gives you a precise tempo to aim for so this here is an accent mark so you could say accent or you could say forced and then here this triplet in bar 5 we can see that there is what they're referring to, but in general terms, it's the same thing. The triplet means three quavers in the time of, so you could say two quavers or two eighth notes. Um, alternatively, you could sort of extrapolate that thinking a bit further, and you could say one crotchet or one quarter note. The maths is just the same. There we go. So we've got a little bit of um, observation now in this next section. We need to look how many times does this rhythm occur? Dotted quaver semi or um, dotted eighth note, sixteenth note. So let's have a look. Just visually, you can just scan through. We've got one here, another one here, that's two. This isn't because of the rest. So here, three. There we go then, that's three times, yep. So now, the key of this melody is A flat major, and we need to give the number of a bar that contains all the notes of the tonic triad of this key. So first of all, we need to know what we're looking for. So A flat major, we won't worry about the flats, the key signature takes care of that. We want an A flat C E. 
which is the first, the third and the fifth. did that backwards then, sorry, I did the thinking before I wrote the numbers. So the first, the third and the fifth, A is the first, B, C is the third, D, E. So we're looking for those letters. Of course, your key signature will take care of the flats that are required. So let's have a look. So bar 1's only got an E of that, the other notes don't apply. Bar 2, we've got a C, an A and an E. So here we are, bar 2 will do. So that's one answer. Are there any other options? Not here. E, C, A or bar 6 will answer as well. So you could say either bar 2 or bar 6 has all of those notes in it. It doesn't matter if the order is rearranged, the notes are still present. So which other key has the same key signature as A flat major? So we need to know the related key and we know that F minor is related to A flat major. So we're asked in which bar is the performer told to pause or hold on to a note? So let's look for a clue where we're told that and this is the symbol we're looking at. That's the pause mark or the fermata. So in bar 6 that's where the performer has to just hang on a little bit. So we need to say true or false to this statement. 3 over 4 is compound triple time. Well that's false because although it's triple time, 3 over 4 is duple, uh, is uh, triple time, sorry. However, it's simple because it divides into twos. 6 over 8 is the same time mathematically, but that's two groups of three, so that's compound duple. This is triple simple, so that's false. Let's move on. So the last question, we're going to have to keep shuffling up and down the page now. I think in the exam now they've moved the line up here so you haven't got to keep scanning to the top of the page. But we'll manage for now. So we need to write out the melody from the beginning of bar 5 to the end of bar 7. So we're doing from here to here. We don't need that last little bit. We need to use notes and rests of twice the value and we need to, of course, therefore change the time signatures. So at the moment, we're counting in three crotchet beats, three quarter notes, and so our new time signature will still have three beats per bar, but to double those, we'll now be thinking in minims or half notes, so our new time signature will be three over two. So I'm just going to sort of glance up the page and just try and get my bars aligned with theirs. So if you just scan to the top and sketch this out, and then to the end of bar seven. Perhaps been a little bit more generous there, but that's about right. And so, here, let's just do the thinking first, and then we'll copy it out afterwards. To um, double the values, we remove the tail, so that will become a crotchet. That will become a, a quaver rest. We remove one of those little tails. So we remove one tail, and that becomes a quaver. We remove the beam, so they become crotchets with a triple. We remove the quaver so they become crotchets. So here this will become a crotchet. We remove the tail so that becomes a quaver rest. We remove one of those beams from a semi-quaver to a quaver. Now this becomes a dotted minim by doubling that, so we don't need to colour that one in. Remove the tail, that will become a crotchet. Remove the beam, that becomes a dotted crotchet. Remove one of the beams, that becomes a quaver. And then to double these, we don't colour these in. They become minims. So that's the thinking done, so now we've got to just apply that to the pitch as they've done. So let's just glance to the top of the page and I'll just copy that out. So I'm just going to get the blobs in for the moment. I think I just need to squish that up a bit. I'm going to run out of space. Got a bit generous in that first little bit. 
So I want an A, 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 B, A, yep, just check that repeated note through me for a moment there. G, F, E, so my rest will now just be a quaver rest. Let's see, so this is the one that I don't need to colour in. So that's that. Down a step to the G, dot that, F, E. Oh, don't need to colour those in. Getting carried away. Already done that thinking. There we go. So now let's get the stems in place. So this first one doesn't need a tail, that becomes a crotchet or a quarter note. This just needs one little tail. These become, so I need a triplet sign there. I suppose you could do a bracket rather than a curve. So they are just crotchets now. This is a crotchet, we've done the quaver rest. So this becomes a quaver now, an eighth note. Just one little tail. That's not coloured in. We can put the pause mark there. We might as well put the SFZ. Let's do everything we can to earn those points. Oh, that doesn't need heart, I'm doubling. So there we go. That could be piano. So this is a dotted crotchet, that doesn't need a tail, this just needs one tail now to make it into a quaver and eighth note. These aren't coloured in and there we go. So might as well just finish that off, there we go. So that's that question completed and that's the end of that paper. I do hope that's been helpful to you. I hope it's of benefit to your studies. If you can give me a like, that would be super. Please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. Please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.